Hi, I'm Carol Henderson. Today we're going to do some watercolor. Um, for the, I hope some of, some of you are people who've been in my classes before. Um, if so, glad you're here. Um, but we're going to do something that's very simple. It is something that can be done uh, just for fun if you're more advanced, but if you're just a beginner, I think you'll find this is easy to do. This is what our, our final picture is going to look like, something like this. No two watercolors are ever exactly the same, but we're going to um, want to try to do a little seascape with some beautiful sky, and uh, let me talk about what we're going to use first. Um, if you have, you should have water and you're going to need two containers. Now it looks like I just have one, but this container is divided. One is to clean your brush and the second one is clear water to make absolutely sure your brush is clean so you don't mix colors you don't want to mix. Now the colors we're going to use um, are cadmium yellow, I have yellow ochre, I have burnt umber, I have burnt sienna, cobalt blue, which is my go-to color for sky, but I actually, I'm actually have a little bit of French ultramarine blue too, uh, which I may, for a nice sunny sky, I may add a little bit ultramarine blue. Now, if you don't have all those colors, um, you can probably do this anyway. Like if you don't have the ultramarine blue, but you have cobalt, that's fine. Uh, you may not have all the brown and yellow colors, but um, you can uh, you you can uh, do this picture anyway. Uh, but those are the the colors I have out that I think I'm going to use. Now let's talk about size. Um, this is I believe 11 by 14 is is the um, mat, and the reason I use. A standard mat is because it's expensive to frame pictures and if you use a standard mat and buy a standard frame you can save a whole lot of money so the first thing I always do is I decide what size I want and then I draw that on my paper that wasn't the right paper though all right I'm gonna draw this on my on my paper just so I know what my boundaries are just do a light pencil now the paper you use makes a difference in your final uh, product I'm using an arches paper uh, it's uh, cold pressed and this is a board so it's all glued down so I don't have to um, tape it down or, or fasten it to a board. But if you don't have this, if you just have a plain sheet of paper, then I would suggest that you take masking tape and tape it down either to a board or to a table. Um, otherwise, it gets wrinkly and that does affect uh, your, well, some of your color is, tends to puddle if you don't do that and sometimes we get a puddle where we don't want a puddle so I think that's oh I was also going to talk about the brushes I'm going to use a flat brush I'm going to use a round brush uh, you can use this is a 10 you can actually use a 6 8 or a 10 because there doesn't seem to be a lot of um, consistency in the numbers one brands 10 is another brand 6 so I'm using a medium sized pointed brush and then I'm also going to use a um, what's called a script or a rigger. When you put this in water it comes to a very fine point and we're going to use that when we get to do the grasses down here we want something with a very fine point. If you don't have a, a rigger or a script or a liner, it's called all three of those are the same brush. If you don't have that, but you happen to have, oh, say something like this, 
a little tiny brush, you can get away with that. I like, I like using this because you get a freer stroke usually, but if you don't have it, this will work too. We're not too fussy. All right, we're ready to go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, make a mark on my paper. I want the sky and the sea to take roughly two thirds of my paper. So I'm going to just um, roughly two thirds of the way down. I'm going to just make a mark and then I'm going to draw a line I'm going to use this because this is longer than my ruler I'm just going to put a very faint pencil line there that I'm going to want to erase later now I also I uh, want another line, oh, about, about a ruler's length up. So I'm going to put a second line here. So what I have here is this top part is going to be the sky. This interval is going to be the middle section, is going to be the sea. And then in the front, I'm going to have the sand and the grasses, okay? Now, um, I'm also going to draw in some little waves. So I'm going to take, just very, I want very lightly with my pencil, I'm going to draw a wave back there. And the only reason I'm doing this, and I'm just going to make it, you know, wiggly, the way waves tend to be, and the reason I'm doing this is so that I don't put blue on it when I'm doing the sky. And I'm going to have a little bit of the froth coming onto the sand at one place. And then I'm going to, where that was, I'm going to erase that line. are going to be. So let's start painting. All right, the first thing we're going to do is wet on wet. Now in the interest of time, I'm going to use my mop instead of my, my flat brush, but you can use, if you have a mop, you can use it. If, if not, use your flat brush. Most, most people don't have a mop, so. But all I'm going to do is wet my paper, but I'm going to leave well, I'm going to wet all of the sky. And I have to use some caution in how I wet it. I want it wet, but I don't want it sopping and I don't want it puddly. So if you kind of look at, you know, some, sometimes have to tip your head and look at an angle, but you can kind of see where you have puddles. And if you find you have a puddle somewhere, you want to take the water off your brush and and let it dry looks like I got a hair of the brush there and if you can also see I see here's a place where I, where I missed missed it so I want it all wet now if it's a little too wet all you do is just fan it a bit or if you have a hair dryer you can use that Okay, so we want it wet, but we don't want it super, super wet. All right, now I'm going to mix a little of the cobalt blue I'm going to mix a little of this uh, ultramarine blue with it. 
you don't have to use both colors. If you just have cobalt, that's fine. That's fine too. All right, now remember I have wet paper and I'm gonna use wet paint. So that's why they call this wet on wet. And I'm going to just brush my cobalt blue onto my wet paper. If I get a streak like that, I'm gonna wet, wet my brush, not the paper. And I'm also going to leave, because I want some parts of my sky, some, some parts of my clouds to be uh, a really white white, I'm actually going to not put paint on a few places. Now, if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I can't exactly get the same pattern, it doesn't matter. You're, no two skies look alike, and your sky is gonna end up looking a little different than mine, but it'll, it'll look beautiful. It may even look better, who knows? All right, so now I have some blue here and there. And um, I want to show, make a little bit of, of an illusion that maybe there's some breeze. So I'm going to kind of make some streaks, maybe off, off a little bit. Just humor me here that I feel like that says there's a little bit of a breeze there. Now, um, I didn't mention this as a tool, but this is a very important thing. The next thing we're going to use is some nice textured paper towels, which I know are scarce these days, but hopefully you have some. And I'm going to dampen it in my clean water and wring it out. And now I'm going to make some puffy clouds. And the way I'm going to do this is by just twisting in my blue I'm going to twist in some clouds. Now it's starting to get a little, my paper's starting to get a little blue, so I will dip it in, wring it out, get a clean edge, get a new towel if I need to, and hmm, that's starting to look like clouds. Imagine that. Now I'm going to take a fresh one because now I've just added water, so I'm just going to blot it just a little bit because I don't want to get a lot of blooming. Um, if you paint with watercolors, you know blooming is where two colors go together and kind of get blurry where you don't want them to. Alright, now I'm going to change brushes and I'm going to use the pointy brush because now I have all these white clouds, but as you know, um, the underside of a cloud usually is a little darker. And so I'm going to take a little bit of my cobalt blue and the opposite of blue on the color wheel is orange. We're not going to use orange. We're going to use burnt sienna because it's kind of an orangey brown. We're cheating. I'm going to mix that a little bit with my cobalt blue. And then I always have a piece of paper next to me so I can test the color. And I look at that and I go like, okay, that made a nice gray, but it's a little bit too gray. I want this a little bit bluer. So I'm going to add a little bit more of my cobalt blue, test it again. Wouldn't you know at that time, it's too blue. This is what we have to do. We have to play around and get it right. Okay. Oh, this looks perfect. Perfect. All right. Now, I don't want a lot of water on my brush, so I'm going to just dab it on this towel. And underneath some of my, kind of following the, um, the shape of a cloud, I'm going to use 
and feathering up into the clouds at some points, I'm going to add this color I just made up. And you're going to see Oh my gosh, I'm glad that happened because that was too dark. What am I going to do about that? Well, there's a couple of things I can do. One is I can clean my brush in the clean water side and I can go over it and kind of lift some of that. That's more like it. And then um, I can also blot it a bit and now it's perfect. Sometimes you make a mistake and you go, oh, I like that. <laughs> so um, I'm going to continue adding in here and there some dark shadows under my clouds, feathering it up into the cloud structure. Now, as you do this, and I hope you're doing this with me, uh, as you do it, you know, just go with the shape of your, that your clouds took and realize that what you're doing is you're showing that the, the earth, um, that the clouds are actually um, creating a shadow on the bottom because not all the light gets through. So if you look up in the sky, and I suggest that you do this a lot, when you look at the sky, you'll see that usually where the clouds are massed um, and underneath, you're going to have some shadows. And that's what gives it um, substance and shape, actually. So I think that's enough for me to do right now. Um, if I were finishing this painting myself um, completely, I would probably add a little more shading, but I don't think you want to watch me shade for 10 minutes. So, um, and you can do the same thing. We're gonna go on and work on some of the rest of it. If you want to go back to add any more shading, or more blue sky, or whatever you think it needs to make your clouds look very realistic, you can do that. But I think that's fine for now. So we've got some nice white puffy clouds. Um, sometimes, just for fun, I will take a little yellow. Here I have cadmium yellow. I'll take just a little yellow and 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 put a little bit in my sky, just here and there, just a little bit um, to kind of give the impression of a little sunshine peeking through. I don't want it to be real dark. I don't want there to be a lot of it. Just a little yellow accent here and there. Create the illusion of the sun. Okay. I think we're ready to proceed. So the next part we're going to do um, is um, the C. And I'm going to use the same, um, I'm going to use that, that blue that I used for the shading. I'm just going to use that puddle. And to that I'm going to add some more cobalt blue. is called ultramarine blue French ultramarine yeah just a little of the French ultramarine because we're going to do blue next to blue and so we want it to be a little bit different and I'm going to add just a, a touch of the burnt sienna to this blue again just a touch to make it a bit deeper so now I have a blue that looks like that so now and sometimes you have to turn your paper to do to get it. So I'm going to turn mine. I'm going to
I'm gonna put make my sky nice and or my sea blue. I'm hoping I made enough paint. And I'm going to paint around my pencil lines. Because I want to leave those white. Now, if you have masking, you could have masked those, which is you color with a, a waterproof liquid called a masking fluid and that way you can just paint over it um, without having to go around the lines carefully but I figured not everybody has masking fluid so we'll just do it this way now I am um, I need to make a little bit more of this color Always a good idea to make more rather than less, but um, sometimes, I guess we all do it, sometimes we uh, don't exactly guess right. All right, so going around. I'm doing this rather quickly. I might be a little more meticulous if I wasn't. But, um, now I'm going to end my blue here, even though I have white there. That white is going to be on the sand. So this line is actually going to be be even. Alright. If you have a brush with a good point, you can, you know, get those lines pretty easily. One of my core beliefs in, in watercolor painting is that um, if you're going to, uh, for some brushes, you can kind of go with a kind of cheap brush, but your, your workhorse brush, your six eighths and tens, pointy brushes, the better quality you have, the better results you're going to get. They make, um, synthetic squirrel brushes now that are are actually very good not sure who decided that squirrel was a good thing to use for brushes but whoever did we can be thankful Now I, I quickly made a little bit more of that blue and as you can see it's a different little bit different color but you know um, I wouldn't even fuss about that too much because if you look at the ocean at any given time it's not just one color it's a mixture of blues and sometimes greens and grays and browns and depending on and the time of day, where it's shallow, it'll have more of the, the color of what's underneath. So you're not looking for a real um, solid color. You want some variety. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue here and then that 
that's that. Now along the line where um, the sky and the sea meet, I'm just going to take some water. I'm going to go along that line because I want the sky and the sea to kiss. I want them to meet one another and kind of blend one into the other. So, so that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to take a little bit of, of maybe we can just use the cobalt, but we want a lot of water on our brush because we want a real, and that's how you make colors lighter, is you put more water on the brush. Uh, the waves are never just um, solid. So here and there, I'm just going to put a little blue where the waves might actually have a little water and not just a solid um, bank of water. And then I'm going to use the darker, I think I'll use the aquamarine here. And when this is, I think it's dark, I think it's um, dry enough. Underneath the waves, the places where the wave has, has turned over, not everywhere, the places where I want to show the wave has turned, I'm going to add some darker because that's that shadow is caused by the water falling on itself. So we'll just do some, just to kind of make the waves look more realistic. Okay, so now um, one of the, I see I've got a little blooming there that I don't want. So I'm going to try to smooth that out and it's because we're working a little quickly and it's not always as dry as it should be. Okay. All right. Uh, also, if, if you have blooming, you can, there's a product called gum Arabic that you can add to your paint so you don't get bloom. I don't know why I got so much blooming there, but we did. Anyway. Okay, now we're ready to uh, look at the sand. So, for the sand, I'm going to use the uh, flat brush. And um, now we're going to change to different colors. For this, um, I think I'm going to start with the Yellow ochre. I'm going to do a little yellow ochre. Probably I need more than that because we've got quite a large painting here. Incidentally, you don't have to do your painting this large. You could do a smaller one. And I'm going to add a little of the darker brown. Okay, that's a color I think I like. Let's see if I like it. Yes, I like it. Okay, so I'm going to add some water on my brush. And I'm going to use this as my, as my base color. And right up here next to my, to my waves, I want it a little darker. But then uh, I want it. I want it lighter here, so I'm going to put a lot more water on my brush so that I can get a lighter, much lighter color. wet on dry, you actually could do wet on wet too, but um, 
we're doing it wet and dry. All right, and I'm going to, I'm gonna cover all of this bottom with my base color. And the only, the only thing I'm doing is, in some places I'm adding more water to my brush to lighten the color. And we're gonna add color on top of it. And because this is wet on dry, I can kind of scrub, whereas with wet on wet, I'd have to make sure I just did a very fluid motion. But uh, with when we're doing dry, we have we have a little bit more. It's a little more forgiving, I guess. Okay. So now I have a base color. And to this, I'm going to add um, some burnt umber. Now, ideally, this would dry at this point. So, um, I'm going to show you what to do. But if I were you and I were doing this at home, I would let it dry at this point and then continue on. I'm going to go ahead and show you what we would do after we dry, after it dries. And I'm going to get some blooming on the paper, which I hope you'll forgive me for. Uh, <laughs> but that's the only way I really can show you how to do this. So um, up here, I want to have kind of a gray color. So um, let's try mixing this burnt umber with some of our cobalt blue and see what we get. Oh yeah, that's good. That's about the color that I want. Okay, so up here, I'm using the flat side of my, um, my flat brush, but the, the narrow side, I guess is what I mean. Yeah, the narrow side. Uh, I'm going to start by, I'm going to just put in some of the color there, and then I'm going to, using the flat side of my brush, I'm going to brush into the water here because this is going to cover some of the water. Now, you don't want to do it all in the brown because we're going to add some other color just for variety. So, but using this, we're going to kind of just willy-nilly. That's one of my, my favorite way of painting. <laughs> it's just willy-nilly. We're going to just add some of this. And I'm going to have them going mostly this way, assuming that the wind is it has picked up a little bit. I'm going to, wherever I want a little interest, I'm going to actually use my round brush at this point. I'm going to add in a little bit of brown. You notice that at some point I'm letting it um, go out to where it kind of leaves some of the paper showing. That's kind of a dry brush technique, but it also is good for giving the impression of sand. So I'm going to use this color a bit, and I'm going to carry this out. And I've got grasses, and I've got some sand. Okay. Now, I also want to do uh, a second color. I'm going to use the, um, the yellow, cadmium yellow. Yeah, that's actually... I'm going to add a little blue to my cadmium yellow here, too. Uh, that's going to make it kind of greenish, but it'll also, hopefully, gray it down a little bit. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to add in some here and there. I'm going to add in grasses of this color. I'll scrunge in a little bit of this color here and there, carry it out. 
until we have a nice stand of seagrass or beach grass. Now, um, this looks a little lopsided because we've got all this in this, uh, in this corner. So all we're going to do in this corner is we're going to take some of our burnt umber. I don't want it's quite that dark. So I'm going to I'm going to just put in some burnt umber here just kind of willy-nilly. And then while it's wet, I'm going to wet my my liner brush and I'm going to pull out See, I'm not actually painting. There's no paint on this brush. I'm pulling out the color that I just put on it. And I'm just making some nice seagrass here. Okay. Now, as a final touch, I am going to put a little of the burnt umber on my brush. I'm going to make sure it's not too much. And I'm going to put just, just a, a couple of the darker just a couple darker pieces. And I just scrumbled, I call it scrumbling, I don't know if that's an official term or not, but I scrumbled in a little bit. Now to finish it off, we're gonna do something that's I think is fun. Uh, and to do it, the first thing we have to do is cover this part because we're going to make a mess. It's fun when you're grown up and you can make a mess and it's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the uh, burnt umber on my brush to start with and I'm going to take another brush, a, a heavy brush if you have one, pencil, whatever, something to tap it with and I'm going to tap over this. adding sand texture. I'm gonna wet this brush a little bit more. I've got a very fine texture now. Get a little bit more burnt umber. If you're not sure how it's gonna turn out, just do it up there first and then because if you ever go to the beach you know that the sand is just not solid. It has lots of little um, shells and stones and things. And so I'm going to leave some of that. Apparently my water is not clean anymore. I'm going to add, but in some places I'm going to add a little bit more interest by spreading out some of these. But I'm going to leave a lot of them. And you can put in as many pebbles as you want. Pebbles, grit, sand, whatever. That looks a little pronounced back there, so I'm going to just even that out. And basically, done rather quickly and not allowing time for it to dry in between. Oh, I want to do one other thing. I want to get my brush real dry. And I want to add a little bit more I want to add a little bit more um, dry brush. I'm going to try this on the edge because with dry brush you kind of want to get this where where the the um, the hairs on the brush are separating so that you get this wonderful texture. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that in this section just because I feel like it needs it. And that's it. And there you have it. This is our original and our copy. And as you can see, they're a bit different. 
But this one, of course, we did in a little bit of a hurry. We would have let some things dry in between so we wouldn't have gotten that little blooming. But um, all in all, not too bad.